Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. For the next four or five days, Skylum Software is having a 30% off sale on Luminar Neo. Whenever Skylum Software runs a promotion on Luminar Neo, I tend to get a lot of emails from photographers asking me questions about the application. Because of that, I thought I'd do this video and in it I'll answer a few of the more common questions I get regarding Luminar Neo. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website and I'll also have that 30% off promo code listed there as well. Now, one question I often get regarding Luminar Neo has to do with Luminar Neo extensions. When you purchase Luminar Neo, you'll have the option of purchasing an extension pack. I do recommend that you buy it. I think it's worth it. The problem is people are installing Luminar Neo and installing the extension pack but they can't find all of the extensions. Currently, there are eight extensions in the extension pack. If you look over at Luminar Neo, I'm in the catalog module, and you'll notice there are four extensions over here on the right-hand side, HDR Merge, Focus Stacking, Upscale, AI, and Panorama Stitching. Now, three of these, HDR Merge, Focus Stacking, and Panorama Stitching, they're obviously in the catalog module because you need more than one image to use them. For example, if you're doing a focus stack, you would take a number of images of the subject. You'd have them all in the catalog section. You'd go to grid view of the catalog. Just click on the word catalog. You'll be in grid view. You'll have all the images here. You would just select them by clicking on them while holding in the command or control key. Then once they're all selected, you would just drag them over to the focus stacking box. You do the same thing for HDR merge and panorama stitching. Now, upscale AI is probably in the catalog panel or catalog module for some technical reason that I'm not aware of. Now, those four are here, but there are four more. If we go over to the edit panel, you'll notice that there's a little extension section, and here we have three more, Noiseless, Raw, and by the way, if you go to Skylum's website, it's called Noiseless AI on the website. Here it's called Noiseless Raw. It is the same exact thing. This is the Noiseless AI extension. Below that, we have Super Sharp AI and then Magic Light AI. So there are three more. That's seven. Where's the eighth one? Well, the eighth one is Background Removal AI, and that one's a bit hidden. To find it, go to Layer Properties, go to Masking, and then you'll see it's right here, Background Removal AI. So there are all eight. All right. The next question I get has to do with develop. Specifically, if you look at it right now, it says develop raw. It will say that if you're working on a raw file. If you're working on a non-raw file, that includes JPEG, TIFF, PSD, anything other than a raw file, it will just say develop. And there is a difference between the two. When you're working on a raw file and it says develop raw and you open it up, at the top you'll have camera profiles. You won't have those if you're working on another a non-raw file. Also, down here in the color section, the temperature slider will be in Kelvin when you're working on a RAW file. Again, on a non-RAW file, it won't be in Kelvin. It just have a scale minus 100 to 100. So those are the two differences. Now, when you work on an image, you'll notice over here there's an edits panel. We have tools and edits. Now, this is an unedited RAW file. No edits have been done to this at all. If I go to edits, You'll notice that develop raw is here as well. Also, noiseless raw is here. So if you're working on a raw file, these two controls or tools will always be over here in the edit side. And if I do adjustments with either, those adjust adjustments will get mirrored over here as well. For example, let's go to tools. Let's go to the develop raw and let's do a quick edit on this image. So I'm going to go to light and I'm just going to do very quick, nothing out of the ordinary either. So we'll go here, we'll take blacks down, we'll open up whites. Uh, let's close this down so it looks nice and neat. Let's go to color and add a little bit of vibrance. All right. And let's go to optics and click all those boxes. So I did adjustments, develop raw. Close it all down. It still says develop raw. If I open it up, you'll notice my adjustments are still there. If I go over to the edits panel, you'll notice, I'm sorry, the edits panel, you'll notice those adjustments are mirrored over here. So it's the same exact tool. Where it gets a bit confusing is if we go back to tools and let's say I want to add some details to this. So I'll go to details. Now watch, as soon as I move a slider, it still says develop raw. I'm just gonna move the slider and look at that. It doesn't say develop raw anymore. 
let me do this adjustment. I'm going to overdo it too. All right. Just so you, I want to prove a point. So I'm overdoing this obviously. All right. So we did details adjustments. If I go to develop now, you'll notice that it's an entirely new tool. Everything I did isn't there. It's all reset. And notice because it's not develop raw, we don't have uh, profiles at the top. And if we go to color, temperature goes from minus 100 to 100. It's not in Kelvin anymore. Now, if we go over to the edit panel, now because I move sliders around there, even though I zeroed out all those sliders, if I go here, you'll notice it's here. This is no, no, no adjustments were done. I, I want to get rid of it. So I'll just hit the trash can. So it's gone. All right. I did details to it. Remember I overdid it on purpose. Remember this develop raws here. If I open this up, watch what happens. It will remove any adjustments above it. So it temporarily removes them. You notice my adjustments are here though. So if I need to readjust anything, I could come here and then readjust stuff. Let's just say I needed to readjust stuff. Now, as soon as I close it, it will reapply those adjustments that were above it. And as I demonstrated with the develop tool that was here, if I want to get rid of any details. Now, if I go back to tools and I go to details, you can see everything zeroed out. It's an entirely new tool. If I wanted to go in and readjust this or get rid of it totally, I have to go to edits. I get rid of it by hitting the little like backwards arrow clicking on that, and then a little trash can will be there and I could delete it, or I could just come in here and readjust it to something more likable, right? Now, again, to delete it, just click on the little arrow and hit the little trash can. Now, you may be wondering, like, what good is it? That's so confusing to have a tool jump over to that edit side and then be reset. Actually, it's incredibly useful. Let me try to show you. I'll go back to catalog, and let's say you have an image like this. I was taking photos of a sunrise, I was actually bracketing images for an HDR, and this is one of the darker images. But let's just pretend I wasn't bracketing, and I just totally screwed up exposure. I have this really dark image. Well, I could go to the edit panel, I could go to develop raw, and I could open up shadows all the way, right? Oh, okay, right? And now, because it's still going to say develop raw, and that adjustment's still going to be there, in order to get a new tool here, I need to just do something else. So I'll go to color and I'll just bring vibrance up a little bit. All right. Now notice develop here is brand new. I could go here and open up shadows more, right? Then I could go to, let's say, um, detail and add more detail. Now I could go to develop again. This is another new tool, brand new. I could open up shadows even more. So you could see how I could add more than one instance of a specific tool or control, and it might be useful in something like this. It was useful. So I have now um, two instances of develop and one instance of develop raw in order to open up the shadows adequately. And you can see sensor spots. Wow, I should have cleaned that lens. I don't have this camera anymore though. Sold it. But that's how this is incredibly useful to have it work like this. You could stack controls. So if you do like, you know, an adjustment, it's not quite enough. Well, just close it down in most instances and then reopen it. And you'll have another instance of that tool that you could apply again. The only difference is if you're doing develop raw, if you close it and reopen it, it will always be develop raw until you do another adjustment. Then it will turn into develop and then you could add another adjustment to it on top of it. So those are questions I often get. One more, I'm just going to show, show you one more real quick. We did adjustments to an image. If you're working in Lightroom and you want to reset it, it's pretty obvious, right? In the lower right-hand corner, there's a reset button. What if I wanted to reset this? Well, it's not entirely obvious. To reset this, go down here to Actions, then go to Revert to Original. Then you'll reset it. So now we're back at ground zero and we could start doing adjustments from scratch. So that's how you reset an image. So those are a few of the more common questions I get concerning Luminar Neo. Now, again, in the description below this video, I have a link to their website, and I'll also have that 30% off promo code. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.